welcome to another Jazz After Dark. A little different seeing me this way, huh? Just kind of hanging out with you. And it occurs to me you're eventually going to think like he wears the same shirt all the time. I do. I do. I have different shirts, but they're all the same. It's just something I started doing years ago. Hey, hang out with me for a little bit, will ya? Where's all my uh, drinking partners out there? You got water? That's cool, too. I saw somebody leave a comment. You don't have to drink, but if you like wine... Uh, maybe a bourbon, whiskey, scotch, whatever you like, come join me here and let's do something a little bit different to expand on what we talked about this week. Um, tonight, actually not my favorite. This is, uh, my wife has this, she, she liked the Basil Hayden every now and then, and, um, she makes stuff with it. I, I, you know, it's okay. It's not for me. I haven't had it in years. And I said, well, let's change it up a little bit. Uh, I will not be probably coming back to that one too often. It's, it's a little light, you know what I mean? Like if you're a Buffalo Trace person, if you've had Horse Soldier, Weller, things like that, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it, those are spicy. You get a nice kick out of it. This is, uh, you know, it's okay, but it's just not my favorite. Um, all right, I wanna talk about something that we did earlier in the week. The concept of retirement not being a year, a specific year or a specific age, but rather being a timeline. And I got a lot of questions on that one. So I said, well, okay, let's expand on this. I'm gonna go through performance. I'm gonna go through breaking down the, uh, not the performance of course, but I'll give you some examples. And we're gonna talk about how you might wanna position. So I guarantee you, you'll learn something here tonight because, uh, well, I like to teach and I hope you like to learn. Here we go. You can make more money if you break up your retirement investments. You already know that. We talked about that earlier this week. Let's play a game here. Let's make a timeline for somebody. I did this really quick. Apologies for any misspellings. Let's say someone says, I want to retire at 62. And we got this little timeline here and we're going to give them an age of 87. I certainly hope you live longer than that, but statistically you're not going to. So there you go. We got 87 in there. Uh, conveniently works out to uh, 25 years. Okay. So let's think of this in groups. You know how I said before that most advisors will say, oh, oh you, you know, you should be invested conservatively because you're about to retire. Okay. You should be invested moderately because you have plenty of assets and plenty of cash and, but you know, you're getting older, you should be moderate. I hate that, right? I, I don't hate it. I don't, I don't hate anything besides cardboard boxes, but I, I don't really like that because it feels lazy. When in reality, I just mentioned the other day that your retirement is a timeline. And when you retire at 62, there are dollars over here that you're not going to touch for 10 or 15 years. If we know that a market can go through a full cycle, almost two in that time period, meaning uh, you could have picked the high and you could suffer a downturn and a rally back up to recover your money, and then another downturn and a rally to recover your money in about 15 years time period, right? So you could be horrible at investing and you'd still be able to get back above where you started within 15 years. 7.1 is the magic number actually, if you wanna know. So um, if you are worried that you may, might invest at a high, just say 7.1 years from decline to rally and get above your average price, that's that's the worst it can get, right? I did a class on that for clients, but uh, let's do this here. So 62, retirement start. We're gonna break it down. We're gonna say this is your, I don't wanna say bucket, but this is how we're gonna break up your investments. A bucket's a little different because we were talking about cash that you may be actually taking out. So this is gonna be your investment profile. This is not a suggestion, a recommendation. This is very general, but just to show you how you can break it up. We got seven to 10 years. We start at seven years, accounting this is our window because we know 7.1 is what we might need. Even with a conservative investment, we, we may need some time. I might break up my retirement as such. I want three years of cash, CDs, uh, laddering bonds, laddering CDs, whatever you want to do there. I want money. I don't want to start retirement knowing I'm all excited at 62. I'm still very young. I want to travel. I want to spend more money than I likely will when I'm 82. And so therefore, I would like to have cash safe and ready to go. I don't want to withdraw from investments while they're going down if I can avoid it. I would then take some of the other money and say, well, I would like to have some mid-cap dividend type stocks or ETFs. Why do I say that? 
mid cap dividend stocks, or if you could sort of break it into like an industry or sub industry inside of the mid caps, uh, they recover first. It's very minute, it's very minor, you know, little thing, but they recover first after a downturn. People go for mid cap dividend uh, stocks or using ETFs, you could do the same. I would then want small cap growth stocks in there. Oh, what's up? I mean, not really the Dave Ramsey approach, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. So I want small cap growth stocks for the back portion of my first window. The reason I say that is because if my first window happens to coincide with a recession, which companies do better coming out of a recession? tends to be small cap stocks, right? They tend to be do, do, to do better because they're smaller, more nimble. They can race products to the market faster. They can get jump in front of some of the service companies that are larger and slower to hire people back on and spend more money on advertising and stuff. Whereas a small cap company flips a switch, goes and taps the guy on the shoulder over in the uh, marketing department and says, hey, run a Facebook ad. And so they're faster to gain business, at least at the start of a recession. Did you know that? Now you do. Uh, so then the next bucket, because I'm not saying as you age, I'm saying as of age 62, right? So we're going to make sure this is taken care of. And ideally you would do this before you turn 62, but that's only a piece of your cash. You need essentially 10 years worth of cash to be divided up um, in any one of these ways or a combination, whatever helps you sleep at night, something like that. Now at this time, you look over here and you say, oh, what about this 10 year window? I'm not touching this money for now really 11 years over here. And it will have a decent amount of time to grow. Therefore, I can make it through a stock market cycle, not an economic cycle, a stock market cycle. And I can have some growth stocks, dividend growth stocks, meaning their dividend is consistent and growing. Earnings growth stocks in there, those are a little more aggressive. Those are companies where their earnings are growing quarter over quarter, typically uh, coincides with a positive gain in an individual stock there. And I might not be index oriented, like just picking the Dow or the S&P, but I'd sure like a spread because what's happening right now, if this month, if you're 62, you just did this, you go, well, I might want to have a little bit of the Dow. The Dow is the best performing index right now. It's technically in a bull market, right? So I might want to have a little Dow, a little S&P and some NASDAQ for the tech when I feel the timing's right. I, I know I can add that in there if I want to. And I know that all that's going to be well, a little more aggressive, right? So we can do things like that. Again, not when you get to this point in your life, but at this point. This is dollars we won't need for over 10 years. And then the back portion of your money that you're not going to touch, you might not even live to touch the money. And if you do, you may not even take out as much as you wanted to. You might just sit around and watch my YouTube videos, right? <laughs> yeah. Where as you reach a certain age, you're more content to do things at home. I tell you right now, when I get to be that age, I'll be outside in the garage just making stuff and just working on the truck. You might know my truck and seen that. I would love to restore that back to the way it is. You imagine that when I'm 82 years old, that truck will be, uh, it'll be 120 years old. How cool would it be to restore that thing? I just think it'd be fun. So the point being, you may not even spend that much money, but at 62 years of age, you go, okay, this is money that I will need from 80 plus. I want growth. I want earnings growth stock, and I want to be exposed to most likely the S and P, the NASDAQ, small cap S and P, things like that. That's what I want to do. So now let's go a little bit further here. You look at that. Someone's going to have a problem with it. That's okay. This is just a suggestion. I'm just throwing out ideas. But if you were to invest in like a moderate fund, you, you don't get that. None of your money is going to be being aggressive. I shouldn't say that. There are, of course, some uh, like T. Rowe Price funds. There's a couple of Fidelity funds that are moderate that take a sliver of the back end and they're more aggressive. So let me clarify that. Um, but if you just build something that's consumer staples oriented, uh, utilities oriented and you say, well, I'm going to just do this and a little gold or whatever. You're not taking any risk with that money. You're missing out on growth. So how much growth are you missing out on? Here's how I did it. And this is bias. I'm just going to say right now, right? I'm, I always tell people jazz wealth, Dustin Tibbetts and everybody that works with them. Uh, we're transparent. If I do something good, or if you want to know something about me, or you have a question, I'm going to either tell you, there's no question you can't ask me. 
Uh, but if I don't know the answer, of course, I'll tell you I don't know the answer. So I'm just going to be honest. I'm a little biased here because I wanted to sort of illustrate this in a way that was fast for me, but that also included our funds because we manage our own funds here. They're free of expenses and all of that. And uh, we let clients see inside of all of it. So the fastest way for me to do it was to take our funds and say, let me build a portfolio that's made up of our funds. So this portfolio, I just named it long term and stays aggressive as many characters as I could put in there. And I said, I want it to be made up of 70% of our moderate fund, which is the, okay, I'm not taking so much risk, but 30% of my back end stay aggressive. And I just use the aggressive stock fund. You could use anything you want, but that, that's what I chose. And so now I'm kind of doing that. I got 70% of my money ready for the front two thirds of my retirement, and I got 30% of it ready for the back part of my retirement. Here's the difference in performance. So we have in black, right? We got the just saying moderate. So if you hate that I just chose our own funds to do this and you think it's somehow you know skewed or whatever, okay, go pick something else. Go, go pick something that's moderate or conservative or whatever and just plot it on a performance. And that's all I'm trying to show here. So we've got obviously returns that are dragging behind that mix that I just shared with you. 70% of this fund, but 30% of a more aggressive fund. Over the long run, you can see right here, the annualized returns, there's about a one and a half percent difference. You look at that and you might say, I don't care. One and a half percent. I give that up on my mutual fund fees and I'm, or I give it to a planner or whatever. Um, Think about it for a second. That extra one and a half percent, what is that being made on? That's your back part of your retirement, but what size is that? If you miss out on one and a half percent when you're 22 years old, we could argue that should that have continued, well, that's a sizable dollar amount, but how big is your account at retirement? Is it not as big as it's gonna get? Everybody has a different number. You might have, you know, I don't know, 100,000, someone else has 10 million, but everybody's account is probably at the biggest it's gonna be. So now take one and a half percent and miss out on that growth in years 10, or well, seven through 10, and then so on and so on and so on. Whew, that starts to hurt, right? So it, yes, it's a minor change, and really time-wise, it's a minor change for you to make this change. It's minor cha uh, changes, minor uh, improvements, but on a really large amount relative to where you were when you were in your 40s or something like that, right? So it really, really starts to make it worthwhile to say, whoa, my retirement is not, in fact, just one date. It's going to be a window of opportunity where I stay safe, cautious. You could go, you could say in here, I want five years of cash and then maybe a little risk with the rest, right? And you might decide that because, well, the stock market's down now. And so it makes sense to, to dibble, uh, uh, dabble a little bit in, in something a little aggressive. But if you miss out on doing this over here, I mean, if you made it to this point, you now know you got to do it, right? If you don't do it, I don't know what else we can do, you know, that you now know you can do that. You have the freedom to go do that. And anybody that tells you, oh, you're 62, you shouldn't invest aggressively. They're trying to get you off the phone. They're just trying to have a quick conversation with you. Someone should break that down and say, okay, we can be aggressive. How about 30% of your account or 20% or whatever you can sleep well with? Let's go out there and make that grow. Yeah, let's do that. You know what I mean? So I hope that helps you and you found that interesting in some way. Um, I kind of slapped together those triangles there, but you get the point, is it? I hope it came through. Anyways, I appreciate you uh, joining us here for a little different vibe, a little different something going on here. I'm having a lot of fun making these videos. I, to me, you know, there's, there's not people walking around asking me questions. I get a chance to think. I got the jazz music going in the background, as always. And uh, so if you're enjoying it, I'm enjoying it too. And I, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you would, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I don't think I've asked you to do that all week, so there's your sales pitch, <laughs> right? I hit you with it. And uh, you enjoy. I don't quite have, uh, well, I don't really enjoy this so much here tonight, but I don't have a catchy 
exit phrase like Eric's trying to decide. So I'll stick with the get your dough straight. And tonight was a different way to explain how you could really add a little bit to it. By the way, that return would be more than you would ever pay us here at Jazz. If you go to our homepage, you can actually see what we charge. And I think we're the only advisor that actually does that. So things like that. What if a guy or girl or group or company was constantly going, hey, let's make this change. That only adds a quarter percent, but that adds a quarter percent. And then they come around and have a new idea, something different. They go, let's make this change. And it adds up. Remember, if you think you're a small fish now and you're young and you got a small account, that's going to grow. Can we grow it a little faster without being reckless? Eh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Anyways, that's all I got. I'm going to wrap it up. Happy Friday. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you next week.